happening in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know I'm super glad to be here because I have not been at work in over a week because I have been in Las Vegas, Nevada at the uh, the SEMA show. It's an annual thing. We do it every year. Uh, a lot of the viewers don't like it when I go there because there's a gap in content because I'm gone for a week or so. And then uh, on occasion I've posted like uh, videos of what we were doing while at the show. And those were not as well received as our normal format of protocol. So I'm gonna do my best to get back uh, to the normular mode of operation uh, as soon as possible. Uh, actually, I confess, it's not my first day back at the shop. I was back over the weekend, which was the uh, day before yesterday, and I was in my truck doing a lot of tinkering with uh, my renovation project that's been going on inside of here. So this video is not about this particular Silverado or its renovation, but I want to go over it real quick because folks were asking about it. And then uh, we're going to go outside and we're going to go fetch a 1968 Dodge Charger that's been sitting in the lot for a while, and we're going to go ahead and bring that in and get started on it. So what I have done in here in the Silverado is basically done the full Cadillac Escalade dash swap on it. You see we have the two-tone with the extra large grab bar with the stitching. And I've also switched out the gauge bezel with a chrome unit. We put new carpet in it. It has a new suede headliner. Very nice and shiny and pretty like. And it's definitely suede because if you touch it, it ruins the nap and then you've got to comb it back into the other direction. Along with redoing the headliner, I've put a lot of paint on some of the plastic components inside. I've painted the B pillar trim, the C pillar trim, the A pillar trim has been painted to match. I've done the same here on the bank stool gauge pod and I also have the wood grain dash bezel to match over here and the paint on that is dry drying right now you can see it's kind of a two-tone because i didn't do the full paint i did a lighter gray and i left dark gray there for a little bit of accent coloring the door panels are going to get worked on next that's been painted that's been painted this has not been painted that one has been painted that's the the b pillar back there so it's all kind of coming together very very slowly i've got like 30 or 40 hours of actual labor time in this thing so it's, uh, it's coming along. Um, it was a bigger project, project than what I thought it was going to be, but hey, the AC system works now. So that's also super cool. We did a cold start on this earlier on the wife units channel. Beginning engine starting sequence now. <laughs> nice. So sorry we missed that one, but uh, that was about an hour ago. So let us restart the engine. Everything in here is working. I have audio. I have climate control. I've still got a bunch of other goodies I need to wire up though, like my trailer brake controller, which is gonna go up here inside of that little hole right there. That's actually a tweeter pod. And I, I attached it to this upper console unit here and I'm gonna put the knob for my trailer brake unit up inside of there. I got a new trailer brake controller because the old one was uh, hanging up down here on the knee bolster and it was really close to the leg and on occasion you'd run into it. So I went ahead and relocated it. Well, I'm going to relocate it. And that's gonna go up there for a nice clean look along with uh, all of my uh, control buttons for my electronic accessories. That part's not done yet, but the gigantic power wire uh, or actually the wire harness that runs uh, each one of the individual wires for these switches out to a relay pack, which is in the toolbox. That harness has been made and installed and runs through the headliner, down through the A-pillar, out through the firewall, down into the frame rail, and then out back and up into the toolbox in the back of the truck. So that's uh, that's been buttoned up and it looks really clean and it's, it's coming along. So I won't bore you guys with uh, any more details on this particular project for now because I have not made any additional progress. Uh, however, if you are unfamiliar with this project and would like to see it from start to, to end, uh, just go ahead and check down inside of this video's description. There's going to be a series of links that will take you to part one of this 2007 Chevrolet interior 
restoration project. I still have to do some work on the seats uh, and the door panels as well. I managed to find a set of stitched up uh, two-tone Cadillac Escalade panels, but we're gonna do those later. Those are in the pipeline, they're not here. So I'm hoping I answered everybody's questions and concerns, comments, and uh, whatever else you may have uh, had on the, the progress of that truck build. Let's get back to some customers' cars outside. We have a 1968 Doge Charger classic muscle car. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. We're doing a cold start on this too, because this car has not run in weeks. I'm not exactly sure what engine is in this Charger, because the work order says that it's a 3.6 liter, and I'm pretty sure they did not put those junk Pentastars in uh, 1968 chargers uh, with four-speed manual transmissions. So according to the odometer, this particular charger has 5,030.6 miles on the odometer. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this thing has rolled over. Uh, it could be the original miles, but I doubt it. Let's figure out which key we've got here. I'm thinking it's this one. Let us begin the engine starting sequence. Not that key. And if it's not that key, it must be this key. Let's try this one here. Yipper, clutch in, neutral. Let's find neutral here. Come on, there it is. Let's give it some gas pumps because we have a carburetor. Beginning engine starting sequence now. Come on, babe. Go, go, go. Yeah. It is alive. Stay that way. Alrighty, customer gives us a list of things to look for on this particular truck. Uh, they want the seats bolted down. They want the dash put back together and the radio put in the correct spot. Looks like the radio's falling out of it, okay. Uh, the brake lights are always on and the switch has been disconnected, okay. Speedometer, looks like a Geiger counter. So it looks like it's probably got a manual speedometer and there's an issue with the gearing and the cable. I think these are cable operated and there should be a plastic gear on the transmission somewhere. We'll have to look into that. The glove box does not stay closed. We've got to look into that. And the clutch and the stick shift feels different after having uh, reupholstery work done on it. Uh, I don't know what I can do about that, but uh, let's try to get this thing into gear. We'll pull it into the shop and uh, see what we've got to work with here. Looks like we're doing a lot of interior work. Here we go. It definitely needs cleaned. Oh, I see the speedometer. See that thing jumping around? Geiger counter speedo. Okay. Let's swing this thing left and put it over here on the big rack because this is a very large vehicular module and I want to leave space over there on the little rack for something else. Alright, we're pulled in. I think we're on the rack enough. Let's go ahead and power this unit down and climb out of here because it's a, it's a little warm inside of this charger. Let's get our windows down-ish. Hmm. Interesting. We can't put the windows down because the handle hits the speakers. Okay. Yeah, this thing, uh, it needs some TLC, like a lot. It needs what I just did to my truck, but I will never do that for money. I will never do that job again. But I, I do need to get some, some ventilation going here. Look at this, that's an interesting feature. The front windows are notched. See that right there? There's a notch in that one, and there's a notch in that one. It must be to accommodate this little seal right here. I've never seen something like that before. Interesting. The 60s were a different time, I guess. Oh yeah, they were. Oh yeah. All right, so first off, I think we need some illumination inside this cabin right here. So let's get, let's get one of the lights hung up real fast, like, put you right there. And I think I'm going to start from the beginning of the list, and that's going to be the radio issues going on over yonder. And the cool thing about this charger, I can open the doors with the light hanging because it does not have a, uh, oh, what you want to call it? Uh, what's the word? What's the word for the thing at the top? 
It doesn't have a door frame. There we go. There's no frame around the doors. Got it. Okay, so after we dig this radio out of here, we can do the uh, the bolting the seat down thing. And then, oh, what is this? And then we'll go down through the list and we'll move on to the lights and whatnot. This is, this is bad. Who, who put this radio in and why would you do this? Oh man, I've got to pull this whole panel off right here, I think. How does this panel come off? I've never worked on one of these things before. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's not like uh, the new cars where that stuff just snaps apart, not at all. So I believe I need to pull these four screws out and then this whole panel section will pop out. And then once I get this panel section out, I can see what the dealio is with this radio not being attached properly. I mean, we'll get it attached properly because I have a hot glue gun. I had to uh, purchase it to finalize my headliner repair and my light battery just died. Yep. Probably going to have a lot of that going on since I haven't been here in a week. All right, battery change complete. Now we have luminaries yet again. And the screws are out of this panel. And the panel's still not on the budge here. It's not this panel, I don't think. I may have to take this, this whole business apart. Yeah, I think I can reach through the glove box here. Maybe kind of give this some push action. If I can get this thing to come out, I might have more, uh, what do you want to call it, wiggle room? Yeah, no, I've got to pull this little pad thing off. Okay. Looks like there's two screws in it coming up from the bottom. That might just be for the ashtray panel. Yeah, this thing's got a built-in ashtray. Believe that? Things that you never thought you'd see again in cars, this one's got it. Got all the goods. That long driver was too long. I've gotten a shorter driver now. This is awkward. I don't even know if this is how this is gonna come out of here. I'm afraid I'm gonna break things. And those panels coming loose did nothing. Well, how do I get this thing apart? Oh look, I see. There's more screws down under it, right down here. Let's pull those guys out next. There's two of them, I think. I'm gonna have to get a shorter screwdriver still. Oh, this is close quarters combat, if I've ever seen it. Okay. Little bit at a time. This is cute. As I unscrew this, it's pushing the screwdriver into the floor. So can I... Yeah, so I can only like break it loose and then I'm all out of screwdriver unless I get a shorter one still Let's see here pull this guy out There we go, I hope this is all the screws For this front panel here Okay, and it's still Doesn't want to come out there. There we go. Got it. Okay. We have successfully removed an ashtray, and I still have nothing to help me get this padding off right here. That's that's really super cute. Okay. Problem is, this pad's kind of deformed. It's pushing upwards and encroaching on the space that I need to pull this little panel business out right here. Hmm. Maybe I just need to pry it out. Yeah, I just love forcing, forcing things to capitulate on classic cars that you can't get parts for, you know? That's uh, that's great. Let's see here. Well, I've got the radio out. That's better than where we started from. Let's see if I can't get this guy disconnected here. Come on, connector. There's one. Couple more on the right. Those are for the RCAs. We've got blue and clear, it looks like. Disconnect those, and then an antenna connector. There we go. All right, we're getting somewhere. Okay, so I have found that this is broken, and it doesn't fit or come out. And I think this metal piece is 
hanging on to everything. Hang on here. All right, so that's just a cover at this point. And then this is supposed to attach to the dash somehow, and that's what got rigged together. This is cute too, look at that. That's the wires for the microphone. Oh man, whoever did this, I don't like you. Yeah, I don't like you right now. It's fine though, we'll figure this out. There's tabs on either side of this metal business right here. And that is keeping this uh, piece of metal or whatever locked into position here. So what I will try to do is not gouge up that wire. I need to bend those little tabs. And there we go. There's one. And it's stuck again. So there's multiple tabs. Multiple layers of security. Oh, come on out of there. Bear with me guys, I know this can get a little boring, but this is this how it goes. Maybe I can pry it back in from this side. Nope. Ultimate catch 22 of it's not going to work. Come on. I'm gonna ruin this stupid thing just trying to get it removed from the vehicle. It's all bent up now. That's fine. It's metallic. I can unbend it. Oh, there's our tabs coming free. Here we go. There it is. That's the metal thing. Cool. Okay, so here's how this installation went. They stuck this thing in and then bent these little tabs outward. And that was supposed to grab onto the back side of this metal right here on the dash and secure this thing to the dash. And clearly that did not work out very well. Alrighty, so we seem to have a problem already. Taking a closer look at these RCA cables and two of them are broken and the other two are also broken. And if we look at the back of the radio, we can see that two of them that are broken are broken in the radio. And then the other two that are broken are broken still over here. You see how that one's all sideways and bent. Yeah, none of this is any good. I don't, I don't even know where these go. Maybe they go in the trunk to an amplifier. Let us check the trunk storage compartment real quick, see if there's an amp back there. Because this is not looking like an easy, just put the radio back situation. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. And the survey says, audio box. Yeah, there is an amplifier back here. So we have a, well there should be, we've got a subwoofer. I'm assuming there's an amp built into it, unless that amp is hidden up there under the seat somewhere. Okay. That's now stuck. There. Okay. Amplifier. I don't know where it is. Okay. Alrighty. So, reevaluating the condition of this DIN, this single DIN radio bracket mount. I've bent all the tabs back in for ease of installation and removal and this thing just is not the right size i mean it it goes all the way through and passes in so i'm gonna try to locate another one of these probably gonna have to go to the store myself and get one because i don't think that the part stores have those we called a couple of them already and they're just they don't seem to have radio installs so maybe the walmart or whatever uh, anyway moving on to the the next uh, item on the list that is going to be headlights and Dust for State's headlights do not work and they need them to work. So let's go verify that those are in fact not functioning and then kind of go from there. Um, I don't see any headlights. I think they're, yeah, they're back there behind some kind of a linkage system or, or whatever here. Let's see what we have. What the deal is with this linkage. So there's an actuator down there. A little control rod and some lever business. That lever business is supposed to pull these that flapper up or whatever. And then we can see the headlights, whether they're on or off. Um, those guys are not coming up, so we've got headlights that are not turned on. Then we've got the actuators that are not actuating. And a bunch of wire running somewhere. Is that trailer harness connector wire down there? Yeah, it is. Look at this. It's a flat four connector for a trailer harness. 
Who did this? Who did that? That doesn't go there, but okay. And that one definitely goes to the little motor, I think. Yeah, that's the wire for the motor. I uh, can't see where the rest of that goes, but okay. So here's our harness coming up. That's our harness right there. And then that runs up into the cabin through that block right there on the firewall. So I'm assuming we have an issue inside of the cabin. Let's, uh, let's climb back in, pull that dash panel off uh, near the headlight switch and we'll check the switch for power. We have to have, uh, we have, to have power first. Let's see here, let's pull these uh, sheet metal screws out. It's all very loose. And uh, none of it fits really well. But I guess that's what you get after 50 and some change years of people wrenching out a vehicle. You tend to find some parts that are mismatched and things that are not color coded properly or the wrong threads or broken plastics washers in places where you normally wouldn't find washers like right here and oddly enough there are some items on this list that our customer wanted looked at one of which was uh check the the brake light switch or check the brakes because the lights were always on and the note said that the switch was disconnected and i went down there and found that this was no help. I went down there and found that the, uh, the switch was in fact connected and has been replaced. So it appears that my note is an old note. I'm just gonna pull this gauge cluster out too. Cause I need to get behind there. I wanna check for power going to that headlight switch with the, uh, with the digital multimeter. And I think this cluster is only held in with one screw. Yes. I'm gonna break something on this car. I think this car needs like a full restoration. Worse than what my Silverado needed. Okay, so we're at the switch. We've got some access. Let's disconnect our connector. We need a switch for the headlights. Okay. Okay, so I found the pieces. We have this little metal ball that I'm about to lose. Grab a toss. There's that. So that's the that's the switch body. Now this right here is the slider piece, and I have only seemed to locate one of the contacts for the slider. So the way this is supposed to work here is this slider runs up and down over top of the contacts on the back of the switch here. And that slider operates off of this little lever inside of that switch housing right inside of there. See that little guy? If I actuate that switch, see that little lever in there? That little lever is supposed to run this little black plastic piece right here and then that runs that uh, contact over uh, the corresponding contacts on the back side of the switch. Um, I don't know if this is put or replaceable, if I can put that back in. Looks like it's been glued in or I just broke the glue. Uh, either way, I know it has power here because we saw a little arc that occurred. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and have to source a uh, replacement switch for this thing also. This is, uh, this is going to get good really fast. I'm not equipped to uh, work on such things, but uh, if I can find parts, I can fix it. So while we're here, and this is all kind of taken apart, let's take a look behind this cluster and see what's up with that speedometer business. I have found cable right here and the cable just seems to slip into the back of the speedometer and I'm trying to find where it goes in here you guys see in there oh there it is there's the spot right there the cable slips on and over that and then there is a let's see if I can't see this right here inside of the, oh, come on camera there we go inside oh, come here, of this cable or inside of the cable assembly, you can see the actual cable right there. Now the thing is, that is square driven. See a little square business inside of there? So that is gonna slip into the mating surface in the speedometer. So as the transmission turns that cable with its, uh, the set of gears that I mentioned earlier, it will rotate and it will rotate the gears inside of the speedo and then give you a measurement. So one of two things has happened here. 
either this thing was not slipped in all the way, which is a very good possibility, and it was just engaging at the tip, causing uh, the speedometer to intermittently drop out, or the gears are damaged uh, down below at the transmission. I actually think it just wasn't connected all the way because I didn't feel any resistance on it when I pulled this dash out. It just seemed to have fallen out of there. So what I'll have to do is, uh, when we go to put this thing back in after I get a new switch, we can take a look up at that speedometer in greater detail. Now, the next complaint on the list was the glove box door does not stay shut. And the customer had asked in the list to uh, please put the dash back in, but the dash is back in. So I'm not certain if a bunch of work was done on this before the car was shipped to me and then this note is an older note because there's a few things here that I'm finding that are okay and have uh, are not failing that were also on the list. Uh, the dashboard or the glove box or whatever not staying closed uh, is one of those items. So I'm assuming that's already been fixed. Um, I'll have to call my guy later on and see what's up with that. So next on the list, let's see, headlights work, can't fix that. Electric cutouts, radio working, yeah, it's gonna be fun to do. Also, something about bolting the seats down. See that right there? But these seats are in fact also bolted down. So I'm not sure if I need to bolt them down more. I mean, there's a carriage bolt there. There's another one. Yep, there's the other carriage bolt right there. And then on the back side, let's see if I can't see the carriages back there. Well, they're back there because the seat's bolted down. That's what I'm getting at. I can move it around just because it flexes some but it is most definitely bolted down to the chassis. See that right there, or to the body rather. See the bottom of that carriage bolt right in there. And curiously enough, it seems to have some kind of support beam added to it for uh, extra rigidity. This is a unibody car? Maybe, kinda? Oh, there's the exhaust cutouts, check that out. We wanna make sure these guys work also. Where are those wired into? Looks like. Let's find the wire here and see what's going on with this. Okay, that runs up right here. And then it's going to go up into the cabin, I'm assuming. Can't see. So I assume it comes up through here somewhere. But I don't know what runs the cutouts. There's no additional switch here. I'm not certain what, uh, what runs those things. I think this actually might be it. Looks like a cutout switch. Hmm, okay. So my electron source was getting low and the battery had died. And so I put the charger back on it and some things started coming alive. Uh, one of which appears to be the wiper blades. I'm going in here with the wiper linkage or with the motor. Not sure. I'm not sure what it is, but that's not on the list, but that is something that I found here. I wonder if the motor's bad in it. Yeah, that needs taken apart and fixed up as well. Oh, parts are gonna be fun. And on top of that, that's the off position and I can still hear the whine of that motor. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, I think it's still going. Key off, no motor, key on. Wiper motor, okay. Yeah, something's going on with the wiper motor system as well. And the horn. Alrighty, next complaint is that the stick shift and the clutch do not feel normal after having replaced the carpet. So, let's just pull this kind of back and up a little bit here and take a look here. Perhaps the carpet's just slightly interfering with... I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think the carpet is interfering with the shifter or anything like that. So I don't think that that's something that I really need to be addressing or can address rather. I know it's touching it, but it's not binding anything up. So that's unrelated to the carpet. Uh, next, uh, oh yeah, back to those cutouts real quick. Hang on, I got distracted. I think these might be them. Let's key it on. I don't hear anything. Maybe that's not for the cutouts. All right, so almost nothing works in this car. Is that, uh, 
I guess that's the general consensus here. How about the fan? Okay, yeah, the AC fan works. That's cool. It seems to have an aftermarket AC system. Let's restart the engine here. Hmm, nope. Gonna need more electrons to get this thing fired up. Let's kick up the power some. Engine start. There we go. Auxiliary electrons coming in. Let's get this guy connected. Zzz. Multiple zaps. Free flowing electrons. Let's get that one plugged in. These terminals are garbage as well. They're barely connected to the battery. Hmm. I, I'm not running my mouth about your car. I just kind of I see what it is and what it's not. Okay, that thing's turned on. Engine start, maximum amperages. The jumper box is on. Let's try it again. I want to start it and see if the cutouts work. That's all I'm trying to do. Verify function of the cutouts. I give up. Okay, so none of these measures are effective whatsoever to get any power into this uh, in this battery right here. So uh, we need to kind of make a, uh, what do we want to call it? We need to approach this vehicle holistically, meaning we can't just be itemizing all these little individual things and going, oh, let's just fix that and let's fix this. And because what's going to happen is if you do that, it's going to be in the same condition uh, that it's in. We need to either fix all the stuff on this or, or maybe this isn't the right car to be working on today. I mean, this battery terminal is junk. That thing's been smashed and damaged. This one's barely connected. This battery's very very low on its charge i'm gonna try to recharge it yeah that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get rid of this green piece of crap too get rid of that thing i'm gonna pull these terminals off of here because we don't need them anyway because there's no power inside of the cabin come off torn up terminal we would like to see the carnage yeah none of this is a uh, conducive to a good connection and yeah, maybe if i take this uh Knurled up terminal thing loose or whatever. You can get in here. Yeah, I, I think we should put a new battery in this. And I think I need to fix these cable ends. Yeah, look at that. Things tore up from the floor up. Yeah, we need a good source of power since we do have electrical problems. We need to fix these uh, these cable ends and all this nasty destruction and clean that up put that away properly. Looks like one of those is an amplifier wire that doesn't turn on. We probably need to put a new radio in it because that one, I mean, it is what it is, but it probably needs a radio. Uh, we need to run some new RCA wires to the amplifier if that's important. Probably need to figure out what's going on with these headlights. Uh, I'm not, or headlights, with the washers, the washer wiper arms, wiper motor, these things right here, that, these new blades, yeah. This thing needs a whole lot more than kind of what's on the list. And frankly, the things that are on that list are, are uh, not exactly the most important parts of the repairs in this car. I mean, it is what it is. And I think we can get it back to life again, but it's going to take, uh, take a little bit of effort, like figuring out how to get this belt away from that bolt right there. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff here that, that need to happen. Someone has put in some electric fans. That's kind of cool. Mr. Cool Radiator or a Be Cool Radiator. That's what it is. Be Cool, not Mr. Cool. Got some Elderbrock Performance RPM heads on it. So yeah, someone's been into this thing. Elderbrock intake. Probably a carburetor of some sort. Looks like an Elderbrock carburetor. Yep. Holly Mopar Performance. Okay, so since it won't run until that battery comes up some, Let's, uh, we'll get the doors closed on this. I'm going to push this thing forward. We're going to rack it up. That was loud. We're going to rack it up, get it up in the air, and then take a look at, uh, what the undercarriage looks like. Again, that way we can get, like, a, a good holistic view on what we're working with here to make sure that we're not putting lipstick on a pig. Okie dokie. So I've got the rack set. Let's cruise on over to the green subscribe button. We'll run this thing up. That's my little ploy. To remind each and every one of you who are new viewers to consider subscribing to the channel. That way you do not miss out on any future content. 
and that will end my moments of shameless self-promotion. Charger, moving on up. Go ahead and get this thing up in the air. Take a look down below and see if there's any other surprises in store for us on this particular hot rod. It's so long. Okay, top of the rack. Let's set it down on the locks slowly. There you go. And before I do anything, I want to make sure that the lift points are not uh, rusted out to nothing and that they're going to collapse and, uh, and kill me because that would be bad and those look good okay look flashlight's dead there now we have a new one okay so still very very basic and primitive isn't it let's take a look from our back corner let's not worry about the uh the rust and the uh automatic weight reduction modifications we're, we're gonna look past that and we're going to look for mechanical defects. We could use some grease. A lot of aftermarket parts on this unit. It uh, seems to have had a couple restoration attempts. This right here, that's no good. See that business? That is a rubbed through and chafed wire with a short circuit waiting to happen. Okay. That's not the best. Uh, none of these wires are the best, but okay. I'll deal with that. That's a brake line right there. Flow masters. And here's the cutouts that we were talking about. These are exhaust cutouts. So you can flip the switch, little motor will open these up, and it becomes extra loud inside. But I don't know if these guys even work or what the dealio is. Yeah, that one there. They appear to not, not want to open, but that doesn't mean they don't open because of me pushing on them. They may, they may just not open because the motor and the gearing inside is preventing it. So what we're looking for is where these wires come into the cabin. And it looks like they come through the rotted out floor right here. Oh man, there's wires pinched between floor panels and then replacement floor panels. That's not the greatest either. This car kind of needs a, uh, it needs stripped out and restored. Look at that. We've got screws coming through the floor to add that supplemental panel to it. It's not really the greatest. Hmm. On joints for steering. That's kind of cool. Sway bar bushing has disappeared and fallen out. That needs to be, to be replaced. Where do we start? So it's got an electric fuel pump because that is the mechanical fuel pump that runs off of probably the camshaft or the timing gears. So someone's had it, someone has installed an electric pump because that one has uh, been removed from service. Engine is orange, that means it's good. Tires are junk. Look at all that dry rot. Ooh, yeah, this, this car really, it really needs a good going through and not a spray paint job. Someone has painted over the rust. See all these bubbles? There's some coming through right there, see that? All right, I'm afraid of you see, here's my issue with this. If I, if I do any work on the car, it's not going to be in any better condition than when I started working on it. I mean, it's look at this right here. I, I, I can't look away from this and pretend that it's not there. And it's got all these nice aftermarket go fast goodies and stuff on it. But if there's no floor to hold you into it, what's the point? Hmm. All right. Yeah, a whole bunch more rust over here. Look at all that coming right through the paint. So somebody either bondoed or painted. That's bondo. Yeah, look at that. That's horrible bondo. They gotta you gotta take this down to bare metal. You can't put bondo over rust. That's not gonna work that way. You've got to take it down to metal and then get rid of the rust because the rust will just continue to expand and push through your paint, and then you're left with a a paint job that you paid money for that looks like garbage. This is not okay. Hey, I don't know what to do, guys. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below what we need to be doing with this car. What's priority? Look at that teeny tiny little transmission. It's a baby transmission. Look at that guy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, here's my plan here. I'm going to go ahead and, and price out all the items that are on the list of things. 
I'm going to make note of any mechanical defects that I find, which are few and far between. A lot of this is structural uh, and cosmetic. So I'm going to make notes of all the list of stuff. We're going to check out what we can check out. We need to get some power supply to this that's reliable and in good working order. Power it all back up, get everything running and working again, and then go from there. So guys, having said all that, I think I have nothing more to offer you uh, on this particular vehicle. I was hoping I was going to be able to get through some of those little repairs on this. Someone cut a hole in this to gain access. Wow. I was hoping I was going to get through some of those repairs with relative ease and not make this a cliffhanger. But as it stands, I don't think that that's really going to work out. So I'm going to have to close this video out as it sits. And we're going to have to revisit this particular vehicle uh, sometime later this week after I get uh, some direction and some guidance uh, from the vehicle's owner. So. Having said that, guys, thank you for watching this video. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I didn't mean to make it a Dodge Charger tour, but I hope you enjoyed it uh, nonetheless. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. If you did not enjoy it, uh, again, you can also weigh in in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. See you on the next one. Hopefully, I can see you on some future repairs on this Doge. Uh, I'm not really certain the future of this car, but we're going to do what we're capable of doing to uh, make our customer happy. So again, as always, thank you guys for watching. In the video, in the charger, in the transmission. So I smelled some fuel, and look, there's some, there's some, there's some more, there's some more. And if we look straight up, I found a leaking, bloated, twisted, kinked, very horribly installed fuel pump. With wires just zip tied to wherever they go. This is gonna be a really good start here. Okay.